What's up everybody, it's Nathan Larson here with another video for you home studio artists. Basically, if you write and record your own music, this is the channel for you. And in this video, we're talking about how to use the new live looping feature within the Logic Pro 10.5 update. As you've probably heard already, this is the largest update in a very long time and live looping is one of the bigger pieces of that. But before we do that, I wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by no one. All joking aside, this video is self-sponsored. I'm the co-founder of Artist Mentor. Essentially, if you're an independent artist looking to not only work on making better music, but also working on your music business and actually creating a successful music business, you should really check out Artist Mentor. I have a couple links down in the description down below. That's all I'll say about that. Let's jump into Logic. Okay, now that we are in Logic, here's what you see if you open up Logic after you have done the 10.5 update in the App Store. It is gonna look very similar to how it has always looked. Not a whole lot has changed in terms of the interface, but what you are gonna notice differently on the interface is you have these little buttons here next to your track header. If you click these, it will mute and unmute within your arrangement window, which I'm gonna explain why here in a second. The other thing that changes is you have these two buttons here. Right now you can see we have the, uh, this button is selected, which is the arrangement window. If we click this, that is gonna open the live looping option. And then we can of course change how much we see, basically the, the ratio of the live looping compared to the arrangement window. If we click the arrangement window again, it will get rid of it entirely, and now all we'll be seeing is the live looping mode. So let me quickly just explain what live looping is, why it matters, and how it can actually be useful in actually producing music other than just having a lot of fun. The first thing is that the idea is you can create entire sections of music in more of a modular fashion, where you have control over each element by being able to play each element as its own individual loop, then you can use that to either copy over into your arrangement window where you're actually gonna have the production happening in, linear, in a linear fashion, or you can actually record from here in your live looping window actually into your arrangement window. Don't worry, I'm gonna demonstrate that here a little later. So the idea is that you're gonna have a little bit more of a tactile approach to producing and arranging because you can basically create entire sections right within here within the looping window where you can just loop things and create all these different textures and sounds. You can kind of get the feel of adding things in, taking things out and being a little bit more creative with it. You can also use this in a live context. However, there are some significant limitations that are a little frustrating. This is not really designed for live performance, even though it's called live looping. I kind of had in my mind when they just started talking about it, I thought this was gonna be something you could use live, but it does seem that it's just talking more about you can actually really be working directly in this live looping page or window and then directly input it into your arrangement window. So let's just take the arrangement window away for the time being and specifically talk about how this whole thing works. Because for if you're anything like me, this obviously never existed in Logic. Um, so this is all quite new. And I wanted to try out a few different things so then I could tell you how to do certain things, what things work and what things don't work. So the first thing is, that you can record directly into these individual cells. But you do have to make sure that wherever you're recording, you have that track selected and is also enabled to record. So let's say I wanna record piano, but it is not uh, record enabled. You are not gonna have anything show up in this cell that we can do. Now, if I record enable, you'll notice that now I have a record button in that cell. I can record directly into this cell by itself with nothing else happening. I can make this as long or as short as I want. I could make this as short as a one major loop. I can make a two, three, four, it doesn't matter. But the main thing that you wanna know is that whatever loops you put in vertically here should either match that or be twice as long or twice as short. So if I were to make a loop that's two measures long here, all these other loops should probably be either be two measures, four, more, four measures, or eight measures, depending on what it is that we're going for. But if I made this a two major loop and then made something else a one major loop, especially if if it's not percussive. Percussion stuff, you can get away with that, but if you have chord changes, you can't do that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and show you what we could do here, recording in to this one cell using a piano. Two. Three. Four. Okay, so now that we've recorded in here, we can play this back by clicking the playhead. And then of course it will loop now. So we can double click on this to open up the piano roll where we can go ahead and quantize to make everything work a little bit better. Now, when I hit play in here, it is also going to play the arrangement window. So notice up here, 
when I hit play on this, it's also gonna hit play here. Check this out. So you can see the arrangement window is actually moving in time. And then you can stop either up here or you can stop on the loop itself. Okay, why does that matter? It matters because what you can do is as you're building your arrangement in the arrangement window, let's say that you uh, go ahead and hit this button up here. Let's get rid of that. You can obviously mute these or unmute them. So if this is unmuted like this, then as I am playing things, uh, let's say I start here and I play a loop on top of these, what happens in the arrangement window will also sound at the same time. So you can basically test out how each of these loops fit and sound within the arrangement that you're building. If you wanna click that button, it'll mute everything in your arrangement and vice versa. So you can either work entirely in the live looping uh, window or you can kind of do a combination. I'm gonna show you how you can actually take these things and record them into the arrangement window as well here in just a second. Okay, so now that we know how to go ahead and start editing things very similarly to how we would do in the arrangement window, like I said, you can either double click or you can click E on your keyboard, command key E, to open up the editor window. So now that we have that done, we can start stacking other things and that will continue to loop. So let's say that I wanted to go ahead and record um, some bass guitar. We'll go ahead and do that here. Okay, you didn't hear that second note, but it did play. So I'm gonna quantize that. And then now, if I were to hit play on this, it's only gonna play the bass guitar but if I hit play at the very bottom here, it's gonna play both. So if I just hit this. That's all it's gonna play. But if I hit this bottom here, it'll play everything. And if I don't do anything, it will just loop automatically. And then the bottom right hand here, you can click stop and that will stop everything together, cool? So now that we've done that, you kind of know how we can go ahead and record directly into these cells. Here's what we can do once we have recorded them into the cells. Let's say I really like that piano part that I recorded. I wanna use it somewhere in the arrangement. You can literally drag that and drop it anywhere in the arrangement that you want. Now it's gonna be muted automatically, so I'd have to actually click that button there to unmute that, but now listen. So now we have that, that we just dragged and dropped in here, but it still exists. So it's not like it's removing it. It's just basically copying it over into your arrangement window. So why would you do this? The idea is that you can create entire patterns. You can create basically what they call scenes within the live looping feature and then pick and choose which parts you wanna actually put into the arrangement. So you can get really tactile and really creative over here with just trying things out, trying different textures, and then you can ultimately decide what you want to actually happen in the arrangement from a linear perspective. So what's happening in here with the live looping is not linear, it's actually modular, but what's happening over here is on a timeline, right? So that is actually moving through time and space where you have seconds and measures, where over here, we're not seeing major numbers, we're not seeing time or any of that stuff. These are just individual pieces and segments of music that we can stack on top of each other to be creative with. Now, you can go into your loop menu and you can start creating uh, drag and drop loops from in here into these cells. So you could just, you know, basically anything you wanted. I'm not gonna do that. I don't personally like using other people's loops. I wanna create things myself. Now, you can also create audio tracks within here as well. So you can see. So this was just a vocal and then I did four layers of that. And then I put that all in track stack for my gang vocals. Now, the one thing that is a little bit frustrating is that if you create a track stack, you can't go in here and just play the whole track stack. You can only play individual elements of this. Don't really like that a whole lot. That's okay. You can still drag and drop all of these things into your arrangement window. So you could actually go in and highlight all of that stuff and just drop it in like so. But you can still create track stacks in here to kind of organize things, make things look a little bit nicer. We can do this with any instrument, whether it's MIDI or audio, as I've already mentioned. So let's go ahead and talk about ways that you can use this creatively. So I've already created some things here that we're gonna use. So here's just the piano part that I created at the beginning. So that's the piano loop that I created. And then from there, I created some other different textures. So each one of these modular vertical, basically the cells that go up and down vertically, this is one scene. 
and then we can move from scene to scene. So this is scene one, scene two, scene three. We can actually play these from one to the next and then trigger them however we want to do. And then we can use the quantize start to determine when these will actually begin. So if I do quantize start one bar and I click play here, and then I want to play the next scene, it's going to wait until the next bar. And I can go back. And then from here, you can start removing things. So I just remove the drums. I'll remove this. Now again, as I mentioned, um, you would have to click each of these individually, which is quite annoying. And then once you hit stop, it won't stop until that measure is actually already over. Cool. So this is pretty nifty because what you can do is start creatively building your arrangements and getting a really good feel for where things are at. I could start playing this piano loop here. And then I could add in this signal bliss. Just by the click of a button. Is that the drums? And you can cross over and use any one of these at any given time. So check this out. I'll add the drumsticks here. Is that the drum laps? Is that this whole scene? And then what I did was hit this stop button in the bottom right corner. And again, whenever you hit the stop, it will stop it going into the next measure. You could change this to two bars, one bar. You could even go all the way down and do a 16th note, which I don't know why you'd really want to do that, but okay, sure, why not? But what's really cool about this is since you can drag and drop everything into here, you could create an entire section and then drag the whole entire section over into here. And then now we have this entire scene all the way over here. The other thing that we can do is use the record function right here. Okay, what this does is we'll basically record whatever I do in here into the arrangement window. Watch this, this is really cool. So first of all, if I were just to play this, it's not doing anything over here. So all this is doing is enabling the ability to record in here. You still actually have to click record. So let's go ahead and hit R for record on the keyboard, or I'll just do it up here. Two, three, four. Notice what's happening. So we can start building the whole thing this way. Let's start doing this. Notice uh, when I added that, it's recording it in now. whole scene. Three, four, click. And let's go over this scene here, four. Let's go to scene eight here, just at the very end. Let's take out the bass. stop it. Boom. So we literally just created an entire recording from everything we just did in the live looping window, which is pretty awesome. If you really stop and think about it, you can create some really creative textures by doing that because what this really allows you to do is rather than thinking about, oh, what do I want to have happen here? You can start clicking and recording and actually starting to do all this stuff in real time. Hence why it's called live looping because you can literally record it into your DAW live, I mean, this is all within your DAW, but into your arrangement window live, which is super cool. Now, I've talked about how you can record things into here. You can also record within your arrangement window and then drag and drop them backwards. So you could basically record, say this part here in your arrangement window, and you can drag it into cells and it will still exist in your arrangement window. You're not gonna lose that. You can delete these cells just by hitting the delete key. You can obviously undo that. 
You can change the size of the cells themselves. And there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with all of this. And I think what's really great about this is that I'm sure people are gonna take this and start doing some really, really creative things with it um, to a certain degree. Uh, the sky is the limit with what you can do with this feature. So I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to start using it more. Obviously, since this is new, it's gonna take some time to get used to using in an actual workflow of a song, but I do see this being extremely valuable. The other thing that I don't wanna to forget to mention is that you can use the Logic Remote with this, both on your phone and on your tablet. So let me show you this real quick. So as you can see here, sorry, the mic's not gonna sound great. You can see all the things that I can see on the screen with this that you can then use and play. So let me go ahead and demonstrate, and you're not gonna be able to see this on my phone, but let me just go ahead and demonstrate this by basically what you see on the piano here, or on the keyboard here, let me go back to that. You're gonna be able to control with the Logic Remote. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, I'm gonna click this scene one, but I'm gonna do it with my phone, ready? Now what I can then do Let's go to scene two. I'm doing this all with my phone. Let's go to a different scene. So into scene seven, let's take out the bass. And of course we can stop it. So the whole point here is that there's a lot of different things you can do. You can do this with your phone or your iPad. You just need to make sure you update your Logic Remote so it is going to have the updated features built right in. So that's everything for now that I'm going to cover. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments down below. I really just wanted to make sure you guys had an opportunity to see what you can really do in this rather than just some really broad overview that, hey, Logic now has this thing. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, drop any comments you have down below, and I'd be super thrilled if you decided to subscribe for more videos like these. We'll catch you later.